it's time to talk films with Van Connor, film critic. Van, as ever, what a pleasure. Thank you for joining me. You know, it's worth it just for that smile you give me every time, Patrick. <laughs> Very welcome, mate. I'm always smiling. It's, it's my default position. Um, but particularly at you, obviously, Van. Now, um, let's talk about the films that you've seen. Let's get through the reviews, because I know you've got a lot of showbiz news as well to get through. Mm. Fast X. Yeah. OK, I just, just want to say real quick, when, when I was a little boy, we had a family cinema trip, and I, I grew up in a family of all girls, and it was in 1989. It was yeah. 1989, 1990, and all I wanted to see in the world was Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, The Secret of the Ooze, and all the girls in the family wanted to see The Little Mermaid. And my mum, blessed little cotton socks, took her on my on her own with me in the screen next door to see Turtles, and the rest of them went to see Little Mermaid. Oh, really? So I'm really, ho I'm really hoping that this conversation leads to a sort of family outing whereby <laughs> you know one little boy gets to go and see fast x yeah and the rest of the family gets to go, go and see, and the see. Little maybe it'll yeah. be a little girl who wants to go and see fast x it's true we can't assume gender yeah, and absolutely fast, fast and furious is about as diverse a franchise as it gets but it's been going on and on and on for so long and they're talking about doing a female only version aren't they uh, there's, there's been hints that they want to do a, a female-led spin-off, and there is setup. There is there's ground for, grounds for it, like within the franchise. This is now the tenth main uh, main one in the franchise. Uh, it is, I think, technically it's the eleventh because there is one spin-off already that was Dwayne Johnson and Jason Statham in Hobbs and Shaw, which I, like I revisited the other night. It's awesome, isn't awesome. it? It's great. It's, really good. Idris Elba as nano-powered Superman. Yeah. That's not to love. I mean, it was, um, that was I preferred that to the Fast and Furious franchise to be honest. Uh, me too, because it just went to the out-and-out -out superhero yeah. kind of place. Yeah. This this uh, this goes back to trying to pretend that they're in the real world, which is increasingly daft and silly, although they've got a hell of a plot this time around. So we have a new villain, played by Jason Momoa, who is, for lack of a better term, like a psychotic pansexual version of Heath Ledger's Joker, oh, wow. if you can imagine such a thing. Oof. And uh, he is, he's the son of a villain that they took down in the fifth one, who's now back for revenge. Only he doesn't want to just kill them, he wants no. to make them all suffer. His actual mantra is, I won't accept death when suffering is owed. And he sets out to take them all out one by one in as prolonged and horrific a manner as possible. But again, in a really, really camp, flamboyant way. I've got a clip for you that should set set the tone okay. for you. Just how far he's pushing this. Okay, so this is Fast X. You remember my father, Hernan Reyes. My father was a horrible man, very bad daddy. But I kind of liked him, and you took him from me when you stole our money and left us with nothing but suffering. That's what I came here for. To end that suffering. Oh, and I didn't take that money. I burned it. Very good. Mm. I might like it. I just, I don't know. I just, I, I just didn't ever fall into the, the Fast and Furious fan club. You're either on this train or you're not. And to be honest, like the 10th one, well, if you're not on the train, you're not going to at this stage. And no. to be fair, this this sort of follows up Fast Five, which is the movie at which point the series became really what we now know it as the over the top A team style spy series yeah. rather than the first one where they were nicking TV VCR combos off the back of lorries. Yeah. So that, that seems like a, a lifetime ago now. It was like two decades ago, but it feels like an actual lifetime. Um, this is tons of fun. It's excessive OTT. It's it's ludicrous enough to actually star a man named Ludicrous. Um, it has uh, new cast members. This now, it's worth noting. This series now includes four Oscar winners. There are four Oscar winners in this cast. There's Risa Moreno from West Side Story, Helen Mirren, Charlize Theron, and Brie Larson. So this is still attracting some top-tier talent. And Alan Helen Richardson Mirren, I, I love her. I love I, her. Do you know what? Evidently, Vin Diesel does as oh. well, because he seems to have more sexual chemistry with Helen Mirren in this than he does his own on-screen wife, which is really saying something about Vin Diesel's relationship with his older female co-stars, Judy Dench, she Peter is sexy, Reno, though. et cetera. Yeah. Of course she is. She's Helen Mirren. Yeah, she is sexy. So I think she's extraordinary. She's an amazing. No woman. argument. Yeah, no argument there. Um, the Little Mermaid. Let's have, a, let's have a look at Little Mermaid. I'm not sure this is in my wheelhouse. Um, <laughs> But, Did you uh, like the original? I don't think I saw it. 
No. Did you not see it? Well, obviously, I, I did eventually because I had a younger sister. Yeah. So the VHS era, this got drummed into me. Live action adaptation stars. Um, I believe she's a pop star, but I'm, I'm pushing 40. So I don't know who pop stars are that aren't in Little Mix. And that's yeah. not really for the music, obviously. Um, it stars Halle Bailey. I think her name is as Ariel this time around. The story has been transplanted from, I think, Denmark to the Caribbean, it seems. Right. And it's it's the Little Mermaid writ large. It's the story of the mermaid who you know wants to be part of the human world, falls in love with a prince named Eric and makes a deal with the sea witch Ursula, played here by Melissa McCarthy, uh, to basically get human legs and in, in exchange for her, you know, all, all precious voice. And she gets three days to go on the mainland and earn true love's first kiss in order to stay there. And of course, you know, machinations, Ursula tries to meddle in the process. And it's all about trying to win over the and prince. this is live with action. The aid. This isn't cartoon. In, this is... It's in, in live action, but all the animated characters are still there, only they're now CG, but made to look real. So you have Sebastian the Crab, you have Squattlebuck, I think, or Scuttlebutt, the, the, the seagull, and you have Flounder the Fish, all of whom look absolutely hideous, like turtles, live action turtles level hideous. Uh, and I've got a clip for you of David Diggs as Sebastian and Aquafina as Scuttlebutt the seagull. Brilliant. This is The Little Mermaid. Get off me, you fool! Oh, hey! Didn't expect to find you here. And I really didn't expect to find her here. Uh, uh, hey, you listen to me, bird. The king can never hear of this. We are going to forget this ever happened. Ow! Are you listening to me? Yes, uh... You won't tell him. I won't tell him. And I will stay in one piece. You got it? Got it. Sorry, what'd you say again? I am a dead crab. <laughs> It sounds fun. I mean, for me, the only mermaid was Daryl Hannah, obviously. <laughs> I did think that. I mean, I was, I was naming this evening with you the Splash and the Furious because yeah, of the two yeah. movies we were, we were, we were calling. But uh, this, is, this is a real mixed bag. However you felt about the live-action Beauty and the Beast is exactly how you're going to feel oh. about the live-action Little Mermaid. I had gripes with it, but I also thought that some stuff worked. I'm not going to deny for one second that Halle Bailey's cover of Part of Your World actually reduced this adult man to actual tears. Wow. Um, Having said that, Lin-Manuel Miranda's absolute butchering of some of this soundtrack also reduced me to tears <laughs> for entirely different reasons. Someone needs to talk to that man. Not everything needs to sound like Hamilton. <laughs> At least of all, The Little Mermaid. Also, Javier Bardem is so <clears throat> wasted in this movie that it's really? actually understandable why he's visibly phoning it in. Um, Flounder may as well not be there. David Diggs's accent verges on a hate crime. I'm, I'm not sure of his ethnicity, but almost a hate crime. <laughs> Um, <laughs> Ursula feels a bit lazy. Uh, Aquafina is just Aquafina. And the third act of this is so visually incoherent that by the time you get to that kaiju climax that you know they have lifted from the original, obviously, um, you just can't see what's going on. I mean, the underwater stuff. But it's right. At this stage, between this Aquaman and Black Panther 2, Aquaman's winning the underwater wars. And that's wow. before you get to, obviously, James Cameron's your MVP, obviously, yeah. out of all of it, Avatar. But yeah, this is this is kind of like living in Aquaman's shadow at this point. And I say that knowing full well that uh, Javier Bardem kind of is playing daddy Aquaman in this. Yeah, I'm just so bored with these, these live action remakes of perfectly good cartoons. I watched Pinocchio, wish I mm. hadn't, um, uh, with Tom Hanks, because it lacked all of the charm. Of oh yeah, the you know why they're doing it? All you know why the they charm. do these? Money. It's all for copyright. No, it's copyright. It's actually just for copyright. What? Because it allows them. Yeah, because if there's been 50 years since like Pinocchio, for instance, this allows them to bring that copyright forward another half century. Oh. Yeah. No, otherwise it goes out of copyright and anyone can do it. Well, they're losing Steamboat Willie this next year. So you're going to start ah. seeing fake Mickey Mouses after uh, oh, January. God. That is tragic, isn't it? I just, I just think that the the cartoons were so amazingly, brilliantly done that mm. that it, there's just nothing that can reach that charm. Um, let's have a look at AI because um, Hollywood is is really worried, quite rightly worried about AI. The only people that don't seem to be worried are the actors who know that they can continue acting even when they're dead. Um, Actually, no. Actually, the actors are kind of against the AI. It's oh, the studios they? that seem Tom... yeah, the studios. God, because mm. what? Because they, they, but they can get these actors for beans, surely, if they're dead. 
Oh, but this is the whole thing, though. The actors don't want to be used after they're dead. Famously, Robin Williams fell out with Disney in the 90s for exactly that reason. They wanted to use his footage as uh, as the genie after he you know, wasn't around anymore. Yeah. And he said no. Uh, famously, Jet Li as well turned down the Matrix sequels because part of the deal with Warner Brothers around the you know millennium uh, was that they wanted to digitally scan him and own the copyright. But wasn't Hank saying statue. the other day, oh, I could keep acting... After I've, I'm dead. Hanks is an Hanks is an oddball, but to be fair, he always has been, and he's been very in with the Robert Zemeckis tech crowd. The whole thing that we've got at the moment is we've got the strike going on mm. in Hollywood. We've got the Writers Guild strike that's happening at this moment. I think it's now in its uh, third week. I think we've gone into its start at the very beginning of May. It's the first strike we've had since 2007, 2008, which is the the last one I remember in my lifetime. I, I think remember we had that one, one. Yeah. A decade before that. Well, you remember because all of your favourite TV shows got ruined that year. They all went off the air early that year and uh, and obviously we got quantum of solace and transformers revenge of the fallen out of it both of which sucked royally thanks to the writer's <laughs> strike um part of part of the strike is about the studio's willingness to use ai and the writers guild want the studios to agree that things like chat gpt will only be used for research purposes and for background purposes, they will not be used to actually write scripts. There's also the issue of streaming residuals because streaming doesn't fall under traditional broadcasting. Yeah, I totally rights. support the writers on this. I think yeah. they're being absolutely yeah. stuffed at the moment. It does have its good sides, though, on the other hand. So we had a movie, I think you and I talked about uh at the very beginning of this year, maybe end of last year, called Fall, that had been translated had uh, been translated from an R rating to a PG thirteen rating, using AI to actually change the lip sync and the dialogue of all the curse words to more family friendly ones, so that they could reduce the age rating. That is now apparently going to be used to translate and dub foreign language films into English without the old style. I know the audience can't see my my lips at this moment, but you know the old uh, Bruce yeah, Lee. Yeah, yeah. And, and I, jangly lip thing. I, I love a foreign language film, but mm. it really annoys me if the dubbing's bad. So that that will help. Yeah. That'll make it sync up with with English words. Exactly that. So the idea That's is good. you can have the exact voice of the original actor in English, but with the the lip sync to completely match. And this will be done with AI. It's worth noting as well. And this is my favourite part of this whole strike AI story, is that the head, the CEO of uh, Warner Brothers Discovery, David Zaslav, I almost call it Time Warner. It's Warner Brothers Discovery now, uh, was doing the commencement address at Boston University this week. Uh, he's not a well liked man. He has had some troublesome uh, opinions in the past and some attitudes that haven't gelled well with writers and creatives and uh, his commencement speech got brought to a crashing halt with the sounds of protesters just shrieking pay your writers over Ooh. and over good so that good hmm. i expect he's not short of a bob or two so Ooh, no 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 nicholas cage we've got to get him in Oh, we've got to have Cage. You know how I feel about old Nicky Coppola. Yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah. So Nicholas of Cage has got a new movie. He announced this at Cannes, and it makes me very, very happy. This is a new movie that's going to be from the director of another movie we talked about recently, you and I, called Nocebo, um, and also a movie called Vivarium that starred uh, our, uh, what do you call him? Jesse Eisenberg and Imogen Poots, uh, which I really liked. Uh, Lorcan Finnegan is his name, and he's directing a movie called The Surfer, in which Nicholas Cage takes his son back to the beach that he grew up on in his youth, only to find out been taken over and overrun by a deviant young criminal element who he goes head to head with because that's a pitch I just immediately would have sold Nicolas Cage for. This sounds like that bit in Point Break when Patrick Squeezy goes toe to toe with the guy from Red Hot Chili Peppers. This sounds like Nicolas Cage has got a tax bill to pay. I think he's paid all those off. Now. <laughs> I think around around the time that he did uh, the unbearable weight of massive talent, I think he paid off the accountancy bills that, he yeah. had from all of those uh, castles and dinosaur skulls. Yeah, that he was buying. yeah. I mean, mm. just what an absolute legend. He's uh, a legend. And, and very quickly on a legend, if we can, because I'm running out of time now. But uh, mm. uh, I have to mention Eddie Murphy is to star in a reboot of the Pink Panther. He's going to be Clouseau, surely. We, we don't know for sure. We presume he is going to be. We know it's obviously live action. There is a talk of it being a, a live action CG hybrid. Not sure how that's going to work, but this is going out through Amazon Prime Video. So this is oh, Amazon Studios, who he has a relationship with because of the Coming to America sequel uh, this, this past year yeah. as well. So he has an established relationship with them. Uh, this will be the third attempt to reboot the series. I think it was Roberto Benini and Steve Martin, I think were the last two stars 
stars. Not on quite this. So Pete, Murphy, Peter Sellers, are they? Uh, That's the problem. None of them are. No, no one can be Peter are. Sellers. No, it can't be done. Well, we'll see. Maybe Eddie Murphy has got funny bones, so we'll see if he if uh, he can do it. And by the way, I'm just going to say because this is a film review, don't watch Ant Man and the Wasp. Quadra, whatever it's called. I, I'm on. I'm on your side. I'm on your side. Do watch Guardians of the Galaxy three yes. though, because that reduced me to emotional rubble. <laughs> I'm definitely going to be watching that. But that other look film, after your animals, don't. people. <laughs> Good to talk to you, Van. Thank you so much, uh, Van Connor. There, uh, film critic. Stay where you are. We're going to be looking at social media next. 